What is up everybody? This is your guy Kalai and welcome back to Budget Buys. And today I'm going to be taking a look at yet another low cost 60% gaming keyboard. Now, of course, this is low cost and not no cost, which means they do start to add up. So I would like to thank today's sponsor Skillshare for making this review possible. More about that later on in the video. Now, what makes this keyboard special is the fact that I found it on Amazon for a whopping $14. And at that price, I just had to buy it and see just how they managed to get it in at that price point. Though, of course, the main reason they were able to keep it at that price point is visible right on the front of the box. And that's the fact that it's a membrane keyboard. Though, those of you who saw my review of the Lushu Jun DK60 Mechanical 60% Gaming Keyboard might remember me mentioning that these membrane keyboards typically come in at $25. So the fact that this one was 14 is quite surprising. And I've got a theory about that that I'll talk about later. As for the other features mentioned on the front of the box, this keyboard is spill proof, which makes sense because it's membrane. It also has an RGB backlight and it claims to have a 10 million actuation lifespan for the keys. Though, I'm gonna take that with a grain of salt. Yes, I have had membrane keyboards last for frickin' ages, but I've also had some that died within the first week, and I have no idea where on that spectrum this keyboard is going to land. Here we have the 61 key RGB illuminated keyboard, or the YK61 to its friends. Well, at least this incarnation of the keyboard. Now, just a few moments ago, I was talking about how these 60% membrane gaming keyboards typically run about $20 to $25. And the interesting thing is they all seem to be this exact keyboard, just with a different brand and name. Like the Red Thunder K62, which sells for $25.99, the Magegi TS91, which sells for $22.99, though Magegi does carry a wireless version of this keyboard called the TS92, which sells for $26.99, though it's not Bluetooth, instead it uses a 2.4 GHz USB dongle. If this video performs well, I will buy that one to review later. And of course, I can't forget the DGG K60, which just like the Red Thunder K62, sells for $25.99. Each and every one of these keyboards has the exact same key layout, including the secondary functions, and they even have this Hallmark Chonky Enter key. The only real difference between each of these keyboards is the space bar, which is where each of those brands puts their logo. Also, I've been seeing multiple sellers pop up with this no logo version, and they're all selling between $14, like this one, to around $17. Which means those are some pretty expensive logos. Now before I go into any further detail about this keyboard, let's address one of the questions that's probably been floating around with some of the people watching this. And that is why are 60% keyboards so popular right now? In fact, I had that question myself up until recently, and a lot of my friends have asked me the exact same thing. And a lot of the answers I found online point to the fact that it just takes up less desk space, allowing you to more efficiently utilize it, and it's more portable. And those are some of the same reasons why I've been using half keyboards like this Booga one-handed keyboard from Five Below for several years now. And these 60% keyboards feel like an evolution of that because they do have a similar footprint, but they have all of the standard keys you'll need for typing, even if you are missing a numpad. And speaking of footprints, the YK61 does indeed seem to have an almost identical footprint to many of the mechanical 60% keyboards, which I found quite interesting. Now, because these 60% boards do indeed lop off a good chunk of your keys, they get around that by making key combinations with the function key, which when held down changes what some of your other keys are going to do. Though, Here's where some weird choices were made because not all of the standard keys from a full-size keyboard made the cut. Where the Lu Shu Jun managed to include things like print screen, scroll block, pause, page up, page down, home, end, and whatnot, those are absent from this board altogether. There's also no play, pause, and whatnot on the media keys. Fortunately, delete did make the cut and it's hiding over here on backspace. I don't know if you can see it, but it is side printed on the top row here. 
And you probably noticed that when you hold down the function key, each of your number keys is going to have its corresponding function, as well as the minus and equal key having F11 and F12 respectively. Another strange choice was not so much that they have escape bound to the tilde key, but the fact that escape is not the default. Typically, you're going to have to hit function and escape to bring up a tilde or a grave, but instead, you're going to have to hit function and tilde to hit escape. I just thought that was weird. Fortunately, they did include one of the other more common function combinations, which is a function windows key press, which will then lock the windows key, meaning that until you hit function and windows again, every time you hit the windows key, it will not bring up your start menu. That's actually a really good thing when gaming. I've lost track of how many times I brought up my start menu before I started using keyboards that locked it. As for all of the other function combinations, you have volume down on R, volume up on T, mute on Y, LED speed up on U, LED speed down on J, LEDs off on I, LED brightness up on O, LED brightness down on L, you have the ability to choose between multiple LED modes on both K and M. On K, you can choose between the various what they call streamer modes, and on M you choose which solid color you want to set your LEDs to. Of course, green was the obvious choice for me. Now you probably noticed I didn't mention the arrow keys that are over here on WASND, and that's because they're not mentioned in the manual. And it actually took me a lot of testing to figure out exactly how they work. What you need to do is hold down function and hit W, which will then change W, A, S, and E to your arrow keys until you hold down function and hit W again. Now, let's take a look at these lighting modes, shall we? But first, a word from our sponsor. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people. Explore new skills, deepen existing passions, and get lost in creativity. It's curated specifically for learning, meaning there are no ads and they're always launching new premium classes. So you can stay focused and follow wherever your creativity takes you and it's less than $10 a month with an annual subscription. While there are a ton of different topics to choose from on Skillshare, personally, I've been doing a deep dive into video production with a side order of product photography due to my style of content. The most recent class I took was Merchandise and Online Shop, Create Your Own Product Lookbook by Kate Miss. And at this rate, it looks like I'm going to be taking all of the different product photography classes on the platform. Though that's not necessarily a bad thing because each of these classes bring their own tips to the table, and hopefully this combination of skills I'm acquiring will increase my thumbnail quality and potentially my click-through rate. And speaking of tips, this video actually reminded me of one that I've not really been using, and that's to make a shot list. This is something that can help me streamline both my video production as well as my thumbnail creation. And I really should have been using it this entire time. This class also goes into various types of shot staging, some of which I can do now, while others I'm going to have to keep on the back burner until I finish my dedicated recording area. The first 1,000 subscribers to click the link in the description will get a free trial of the premium membership so you can explore your creativity. Now I'm starting this section with the LEDs powered off so that I can give you a warning that there are some flashing lights ahead. I'm hoping they're not too bright for people that are sensitive to that kind of thing, but just in case, here's your warning. With that out of the way, let's go ahead and hit function I to turn the LEDs back on, and we're starting off in the first streamer mode. This mode is a transitional rainbow effect that is currently set at the highest speed. And here it is at the lowest speed. For the curious, there are five different speeds available. The second streamer mode is even faster because instead of the LEDs transitioning slowly between each other, they seem to pop between the different colors available. Here it is at the highest speed, and here it is at the lowest speed. As you can see, the LEDs aren't so much transitioning as jumping to the next color in the cycle. And finally, my favorite setting out of the streamer modes, which is just a nice transition between each of the colors across the entire board. Once again, here it is at the highest speed, and here we have it at the lowest speed, which is so slow I can pretty much finish an entire sentence before we get to the next color. Needless to say, I like it at a higher speed. As for the solid colors, those start off at red, and then blue, followed by green, my personal favorite, then purple, then a light blue, which looks kind of aqua in person, yellow, and then white, followed by a gradient of purple transitioning to blue. 
and then back to red. For those of you wondering why I demonstrated the lighting modes on this keyboard and not the one I reviewed last time, that mainly has to do with the fact that the previous one had 20 different LED modes, which took up a heck of a lot of time. And the other reason is simply due to the fact that I shot that entire sequence out of focus and I didn't have enough time to reshoot it before I needed to submit the video. Oh, and before I forget, here's proof that the YK61 is membrane and not mechanical. At the top, I have the keyboard I reviewed last time, which has blue mechanical switches with an LED at each individual key. And at the bottom, I have the YK61, which if I go ahead and turn off the LEDs, you can see is indeed membrane. And as for the LED count, while I'm not exactly sure how many LEDs it has, it does have only a few per zone on the keyboard and the light bleeds through the white backing as well as the laser etched black painted keys. And you know what? While I'm comparing the YK61 membrane keyboard to the DK61 mechanical keyboard, I might as well talk about the build quality of the YK61. Now it is significantly lighter than the DK61 coming in at 365 grams versus the DK61's 543 grams. Overall, it doesn't feel that cheap. In fact, the Booga half keyboard I reviewed a while back feels a lot cheaper. And as for how they feel when typing, they're not that dissimilar. Both of these keyboards use an OEM profile keycap, and while there are differences between the feel of a membrane keyboard versus a mechanical keyboard, this is definitely not the worst membrane keyboard I've ever used. The keys have a reasonable amount of travel and they don't feel bad when they bottom out. Unlike the gaming keyboard Five Below had before coming out with the Booga line. Of course, you're not going to get the same kind of tactile feedback and sound you get from a mechanical keyboard, which I might as well demonstrate. And I apologize that the camera was very shaky during that. I'm using a new setup and I haven't worked out all of the kinks yet. With all of that out of the way, I've got to say for the money, this is a pretty dang decent keyboard. Yes, the manufacturer did make a few weird choices when it came to what function key combos to include, as well as which keys to make default. I'm looking at you, escape key. All in all, it's still a solid board for the $14 I spent. Of course, if I'm correct in my assumption that the Mage Gee, Red Thunder, and DGG boards are all this one with just a different logo on the space bar, I'm not going to want to spend the extra eight to $10 to get that. Of course, the price could always be better. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if we see this exact keyboard or something with a similar profile at five below in the not too distant future. I've been looking at these on various wholesale sites and the price is not that far off from some of the other items I've seen them selling under the Booga brand. So maybe we'll see these in their stores come holiday season, if not in 2021, maybe in 2022. And since I think it's an okay buy at $14, I definitely think it would be a great buy at $10. Yes, this is a membrane keyboard and not mechanical, but not everybody likes the layout of a 60% keyboard. So having an option to buy a board with a near identical layout for a fraction of the price just to try things out would go a long way. And if you end up liking the layout, you can always upgrade to a much more expensive board at a later date. The only real downside to Five Below carrying these keyboards is the fact that, as far as I know, they don't offer an affiliate program, which means I don't make any money when I tell people to buy their products. However, I can leave an affiliate link for this keyboard, and I'm gonna do so down in the description below. And on that note, until next time, this is your guy, Kali, signing off.